This is a moment, obviously, of uh, great sorrow for the country as uh, three fallen uh, soldiers from the U.S. returning home on uh, U.S. soil. And uh, seeing this moment here is very, you see the casket there right to the left of the first fallen soldier. Again, the Bidens uh, grieving with the families of the three American service members who died when a drone struck a base known as Tower 22 near, near the demilitarized zone on the border between Jordan and Syria. The Iraqi border was only six miles away. The fallen troops were Sergeant William Jerome Rivers, Specialist Kennedy Landon Sanders, and Specialist Brianna Moffitt, all of whom uh, from Georgia. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and General C.Q. Brown, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, also in attendance with the Bidens for this solemn ritual at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. Speaking to reporters at the White House on Tuesday, the president said yes when asked whether he has decided on a response, but he did not offer any details. And uh, of course, the rest of the world continues to await uh, that response. These deaths were the first U.S. fatalities blamed on Iran-backed militia groups who for months have been intensifying their attacks on American forces in the region following the onset of the Israel-Hamas war in October. Separately, two Navy SEALs died during a January mission uh, to board an unflagged ship that was carrying illicit Iranian-made weapons. Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary uh, said that the fallen heroes had been deployed to Jordan in support of Operation Inherent Resolve and the International Coalition working to ensure the lasting defeat of ISIS. The soldier's death uh, marked a major escalation of violence in the ongoing attacks on U.S. forces in the region. The Biden administration has blamed these attacks on Iran-backed militia groups in Syria and Iraq who have struck American targets in retaliation for the U.S. support of Israel in its ongoing war with Hamas in Gaza that began, of course, back on October 7th. Here is the moment. of the very, very solemn moment of the casket going past the President of the United States, the Chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, as well as the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and First Lady Jill Biden, as they continue to watch two more caskets are going to be loaded up. They will be brought to a mortuary that is on base there at Dover. And after that process is complete, each of the three fallen soldiers will be accompanied by a representative from the Army, and they will personally be the escort to the final resting place that the family has chosen. If you've ever seen it, there is a HBO made for movie called Taking Chance. It uh, really showcases the dignified transfer and the process of bringing home a fallen soldier from overseas back to Dover and then back to their home resting place, wherever that may be in the United States. Obviously, this is one of the hardest parts 
for a president to do, to be there to watch and see fallen service members come back after paying the ultimate sacrifice. In the days ahead of this, President Biden did call all three of the, of the families of the fallen and uh, gauged if it would be okay if he could attend this transfer and they all agreed. And that is why he is here today. We are awaiting now the next casket uh, to come. This is the second dignified transfer that President Biden has attended. He took part in a ritual back in August of 2021 after 13 service members were killed in a suicide bombing in Afghanistan during the military's chaotic withdrawal of Afghanistan. And now we are seeing the second shot here as well of the casket. And soon we will see the third one right here as President Biden attending this very somber moment of the dignified transfer of these U.S. soldiers at Dover in Delaware. Again, no audio associated with this on the ground here. President Biden said earlier this week, the service members embodied the very best of our nation, unwavering in their bravery, unflinching in their duty, unbending in their commitment to our country, risking their own safety for the safety of their fellow Americans and our allies and partners with whom we stand in the fight against terrorism. It is a fight we will not cease. This was another shot that was available here to us. Um, this is, again, tape playback of the first casket coming off the plane here. And a very hard moment uh, for the families uh, that are watching this, of course, along with the president and the first lady, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin as well. as this tape playback shows the first moment here of the casket leaving. shot going a little haywire right now. We'll show you this one while we uh, wait to get President Biden's shot back up here. Again, to reiterate, uh, the dignified transfer is not a ceremony. Rather, it is a solemn movement of the transfer, a case by a carry team composed of military personnel from the fallen members' respective service. A dignified transfer is conducted for every U.S. military member who dies in the theater of operation while in the service of their country. A senior ranking officer of the fallen members' service presides over each dignified transfer. The sequence of the dignified transfer starts 
with the fallen being returned to Dover Air Force Base by the most expedient means possible, which typically includes a stop at the Air Force Base in Germany. It is the Department of Defense's policy to return America's fallen to their loved ones as quickly as possible. Once the aircraft lands at Dover Air Force Base, service-specific carry teams remove the transfer cases individually from the aircraft and move them to an awaiting transfer vehicle. The vehicle then transports the fallen into the mortuary facility for positive identification by the Armed Forces Medical Examiner System and preparation for their final resting place. In April of 2009, the Secretary of Defense announced a change in policy that upon consent of the family of the deceased allowed media access to cover dignified transfers. The only dignified transfers that will be open to media coverage with family approval are those personnel who die in the line of duty supporting current operations. The privacy and desires of the immediate family receive the highest consideration at all times. And again, this is President Biden's second attendance at a dignified transfer, the hardest part of his job and the most saddest, of course, is seeing American personnel coming back. And you are watching live now from Fox, and uh, we continue and to pay our respects to the family and friends of these three fallen American heroes. Again, Sergeant William Jerome Rivers was 46 years old, Specialist Kennedy Sanders, 24, and Specialist Brianna Moffitt was 23, all coming and residing from Georgia. Then this van will take them to the mortuary and prepare them to go back to Georgia so that they, their families can have the final goodbye with family and friends that support them during this very, very difficult time.